right, I'll, well, I'll obviously uh, buy the quarterback position just because of Connor. Welcome to the Tech Sags Rewind. We are here in our last minutes of the show. We've had a bunch of guests today, and let's go around the room and hear who everyone's favorite guest today was. Hmm, myself. That was awesome. I was Duh. a guest on my own show. <laughs> it's not my show. It's your show, The People's. But uh, Browning, your it's favorite always, part. For me, it's the fan show, man. That's your favorite part? right here. Heck yeah. Philip, your first time on the show? Yeah, so to, I guess I have to be like you and say I'm my favorite guest because this is my first time and yeah. it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it, it was a good time. You did a very good job. On the program, though, we had actual real guests. Sorry, guys. Oh. I, I love you guys, but let's be honest. We had some real OB guests. McGee. OB, QB1, mm-hmm. Stephen McGee. We had uh, Jim Schlossnagel. Big yeah, deal, yeah, right? We did have Schloss, yeah. Aaron Torres tried to come out with some jokes to start things off. They didn't work out for, well for him. And then <laughs> Megan Gibson Lofton on the program. So it was a loaded, loaded Thursday here. Check out the rewind. What position groups on offense do you believe in? Uh, QB, wide receiver, uh, and I have tight end in that group if, if you want. Running back and offensive line. Your options are buy, sell, lease, or futures. All right. I'll, well, I'll obviously uh, buy the quarterback position just because of Connor. Um, and I'll, I'll probably lease the wide receiver position. I know we get some transfer portal guys, and we do have some productive playmakers uh, at that group already, guys like Moose and Noah Thomas, uh, Jade Walker, uh, and then you add in a group of, of young guys. Um, and look, I, I'm i going to sell the offensive line until I see something different that proves to me that they can uh, protect and create lanes for the runners. Okay. And futures? Did we do futures? I uh, did not do futures. Oh, Offensive line? No, no, no. Uh, running back? Let's go running back. Yeah, it's actually a really good one. Uh, just because, you know, Moss did some really good things. Ruben is a good young player. I think that he's got to show us more to live up to the five-star uh, ballot that he came in with. So I'll, I'll definitely, on the futures market, I'll take running back. OB, play the game. Um, I don't know that I can disagree with anything. I'm buying. I'm buying the quarterbacks, especially Connor. I'm uh, leasing the receivers because I thought Jade Walker was really good last yep. year. In a, I mean, you got more out of him than you expect. I like what I've always seen from Moose when he plays, uh, and Noah showed flashes. And I'm going to group the tight ends with them. And you got uh, Donovan Green coming back, so I'm going to lease that. I'd have to. I'd have to sell the line based for the same reasons that yep. that, that Stephen just said, and the futures. Well, I think there's a, a pretty good future at running back with Ruben Owens. I like what I see from him. I would be willing to put O line on futures. I don't know who I'd put on on sell in this uh, in this scenario, but I would be willing to listen to O line. And at least I'm always thinking, all right, wh- it, when when it goes bad, when this guy goes down, or if this guy goes down, what are we going to do? And then we have those players ready. I guess last thing because we're up against the break, right? I want to ask you about this Vanderbilt team. To me, when you look at them on paper, obviously very skilled. Tim Corbin's never going to run out nine guys that are not skilled. Mm-hmm. But it's a different looking team to me than maybe offensively than what Vanderbilt has done in the past because you know there's typically been somebody in the middle that will really hurt you, but their doubles numbers are way up this year. And then obviously they run the bases like crazy. Yeah, they run the bases like crazy. They'll bunt throughout the lineup. Um, two primary guys run the bases like crazy. They actually hide one of their best power guys in the nine hole, mm-hmm. Vastine, I think. Um, he's got a lot of extra base hits. And he, he's sneaky, sneaky power. Um, and they, they're playing three or four freshmen that are super talented. The thing about Vandy is because of their academic situation, as far as I know, they can't get a lot of transfers. Excuse me. They can't get a lot of the big transfer names. They'll get some of them. Um, so they have to have their young players grow up, and, and R.J. Austin and some of these other guys who have been playing for a couple of years are now evolving. And they had a, I think he's a freshman, right-handed hitter. Um, he hit two homers against LSU over the Big weekend. Big dude. Huge dude. And the wind's going to be blowing out. So they, they have more power than they're showing. Um, and obviously, the pit, it's the pitching. It's the, they, have like, they use five or six lefties. Mm-hmm. And they use them all the time. They pitch to situations, big, big power arms. Your fans are going to want to really see on Saturday, Cart Holton, the little lefty, he's electric. Strike thrower up to 95. I mean, we have our hands full with, with, uh, with their big velocity pitchers all weekend. Schloss, uh, obviously the focus right now is Vandy, but 
over the night in the next nine days, seven games, just with yeah. a short week next week or the Thursday start to that series. Just yeah. do you have to kind of manage bodies as you go through this? No, you know, not really. Um, unless someone's banged up, it is what it is. We talk about this all the time. We don't, you know, they, these guys. If we play through the weekend, they'll have Monday off. Tuesday's a four o'clock game, which is going to be exciting. I think uh, General Welsh throwing out the first pitch mm-hmm. at the Air Force Academy in town, which is always an awesome experience. Um, and so hopefully get that game over at a decent hour. Then we'll travel on Wednesday. Uh, these guys are fine. You know, again, they all say they want to play pro baseball. Here you go. Which is, I think this is going to work out well for everybody. I'm fascinated to see what happens with the Kentucky search. I'll be fascinated to see what happens if it goes beyond Scott Drew. Um, but it, uh, I do think Scott Drew is probably going to be the guy. But I do tend to agree with you. I certainly agree with you, as a matter of fact. I think it's just the best for everybody. Everybody gets a fresh start. Arkansas is relevant. Kentucky's always going to be relevant. It's good for college. It's good for college hoops. It's good for both of those programs. AT, let's close out with a football question. I think we have some spring games this weekend. Yeah. Jalen Milrow in Alabama. We'll get to see the Kalen DeBoer era. How yeah. interested, intrigued are you by what the new look Bama is going to be? Yeah, it's crazy. I always tune into these spring games expecting to learn something, and then usually the starters are out after a series or two. But listen, I mean, it's, it's amongst the most interesting stories in the sport. I, I believe Ohio State has its spring game, too. And listen, you know, kind of a put up or shut up year for Ryan Day. Obviously, um, you know, we all think that, you know, the, the, the collective really came to bat for him to get the Caleb Downses and the Quinshawn Junkins of the world. So I'll tune in. Um, you know, I'm not going to take any sweeping judgments about what Kalen DeBoer is capable of this year or what uh, Ohio State is capable of under Ryan Day this season. But I'll absolutely tune in. And I think, it, I, listen, I think it's great for college sports as a whole that these games are getting more promotion. You know, uh, the Ohio State game is on Fox. Obviously, the Bama game is always going to resonate. So, yes, to answer your question, I'll tune in. I'm excited about both eras. But I promise I will not be there on Saturday afternoon tweeting out hot takes if Jalen Milrow goes uh, 7 for 12 in the spring game and doesn't throw a touchdown pass. Aaron, I appreciate you, brother. I'll try not to. I can't. I can't, I can't promise. I'll try not to, though. Well, our friend at KBTX, Tyler Shaw, has this uh, article out. Kennedy is uh, talking about Emily Kennedy, by the way. One of the uh, f- of, is the first Aggie to receive back-to-back Conference Pitcher of the Week honors since All-American Megan Gibson did it back in 2008. And uh, you're also one of her mentors. So just talk a little bit about what you've seen from, from Emily and just the success she's having. I mean, I'm biased. I love Emily. (laughs) Um, I consider her kind of one of my extended children, but um, she's done such a great job this year. And the biggest adjustment that she's made um, just as an outsider being one of her coaches, but also talking to her is her mentality. And honestly, that's what I've been telling her since I've known her is the one thing that would um, help her or hurt her, you know, and, and I just, I love that she's really committed to it and committed to making herself better and it's showing now on the field and everybody's getting to see the Emily Kennedy that, you know, I've known she could be. And um, I think it's, it's great that she's on the path that she is. And I know coach Ford's helped her so much with that as well. What stands out, you know, like when she's on the mound that in the circle that makes her so effective. Um, I think it's her presence. I mean, she's already six two, which, you know, God blessed her with that. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think it's just her presence and you can really just see it in her face. Um, and I don't know if that's just me knowing her and, you know, knowing when she's feeling good about herself, but it's really just, you know, kind of her demeanor on the mound and not allowing, you know, the little things um, to affect her. You know, I think in the past she would get frustrated because she wants it so bad. Um, she would get frustrated, you know, whether it be the umpire not giving her the call she wanted or just her not getting the outcome she wanted. Um, and I think that's the biggest adjustment that she's made this year. Well, and when you have someone like her that you know you can go to, doesn't it make everything just easier, not only for Trisha, but just for fielding purposes, for, you know, the offensive side of things? You just, when you know you've got that there behind you, you know you're good. Absolutely. You know, it's kind of like having a a hidden weapon at all times in your back pocket, even though teams are going to know that she's a part of that staff. All right. Philip, I think you've done the rewind before, so tell the people what to do. Oh, you got to go to like, subscribe. Smash the button, right? Right. And comment. follow and comment along, right? Yeah. Look at your face. All right. I mean, no, the new guys never get that. Yeah. Well, he did it once before yeah. he was in studio, so he, he's done it once. My kids watch me. YouTube, so I know yeah. okay, how good, they good, all good. end. Well, good for you, man. Yeah. Well done. Well, very well done. All right. Uh, that's going to do it. We'll see you next time.